Hello, good afternoon. My name is Kevin Sagru. I am the head of creative evaluation at Dynata in EMEA and APAC regions. I do apologize, I can't join you in person today. I caught COVID a couple of days ago, so I'm unable to fly to Berlin to be with you. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations made in person today. And please forgive me for sharing this by video. Later, we work with hundreds of clients across thousands of ad campaigns around the world. From this quantitative research where we test the performance of ads, we've gained insight into the drivers of meaningful attention in advertising. At the highest level, there are four common points. The first is that meaningful attention is delivered through memorable ads that people recall seeing, that the ads are influential and contribute to your objectives and desired outcome, that the ads are attributable to your brand name, and finally, that the ads generate measurable outcomes that report effective and efficient progress for your marketing. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity of conducting some unique research to identify whether there are inherent benefits for brands in choosing one of four popular different approaches to advertising. What we looked at were 16 ads from 16 different brands in different industries. But each of these were using one of four approaches, either product feature, where they showcase and demonstrate the product, or purpose, where the brand champions a cause, storytelling, th shown through the lens of a product featured in the ad, or brand storytelling, where no product is shown in the advert. The adverts we selected were from different industries and ran in the last few weeks, months, or in some cases, the last couple of years, in many cases, internationally. We conducted a survey of just under 800 people where we showed each person only one approach of the four approaches. And in each case, they saw four ads demonstrating this approach. We then compared the results of these different groups. Let me bring this to life for you by showing you a montage of the ads included in each of the four approaches. Those 16 ads were using very different creative executions, but through those four common approaches. Now we compare the results from the survey to see how meaningful attention is built through 
four measures with ad recall, memorability, brand attribution, and brand familiarity being reported. For unprompted ad recall, we're checking that the ad is remembered, and we're doing this without showing the ad again. We're asking them to remember what they've recently seen earlier in the survey. We then prompt people by showing them still images, photos taken from the videos of the ads, and they have to identify from those moments captured in the photos who was the brand and what was the, the product, if there was one. We then look at brand attribution, and we ask people to identify the brand mentioned or shown in the ad. And then finally, with brand familiarity, we look at another related aspect which impacts attention and memorability, and that's whether people are a current customer or were previously a customer or have never been a customer of the brand featured in the ad. While many brands have started to include a purpose as the focus of a cause that their brand champions in their ads, our research showed that there is a difference in the level of ad recall in an unprompted sense between people who've seen ads with a purpose compared to the other three approaches. And the difference is quite marked and surprising perhaps. That difference in performance is even more marked and statistically significant when we compare the brand storytelling approach versus purpose. Purpose, again, was the least successful in giving performance in prompted ad memorability. People aren't remember seeing these ads as much as the other three approaches. The lack of attention driven by purpose as an approach is then unfortunately generating less brand attribution as well when compared to the other three approaches. We're finding that the product feature and storytelling approaches both with product and without are statistically significantly better in performing versus ads that adopt a purpose. And this is really interesting. What we're finding is the purpose chosen by any brand may not be as relevant and appeal to a wide audience in every case. And where people do see the ad, they may remember the cause that was mentioned more than the brand. Now, for some particular campaigns, such as uh, government warnings or where there is a, an item that needs to be brought to the public's attention, getting the message across could be the most important thing to do. But for most commercial brands, they will want their brand associated with a cause and to benefit from that cause because they want to prompt people into supporting them, donating or acting in a way which is beneficial to the brand as well as the consumer. The brand familiarity factor plays an interesting part. It's clear that people recall and are influenced by product demonstration ads in a more short-term sales impact approach. They see a product demonstrated. It seems to do things that they're interested in and that the performance is uh, self-evident through the demonstration. And this can generate interest and sales short-term. But inside our survey, across the 800 people approximately that took part, we found it interesting that brands that often use product feature or demo also end up having a higher number of previous customers where people have tried the products and then have walked away from them subsequently. Now, we're speculating here. We believe this needs further research, but perhaps the demonstration and success of the advert that initially lures consumers in to try a product when they buy it for the first time may not be sustained through everyday use if there is too much overclaim. The other interesting uh, support here, as we look de more detailed uh, into the analysis, we find that there are more people who have never been a customer of brands that champion a purpose. So they're failing to attract as many customers. So now that we've looked at those different approaches, 
let's peel through the next layer and look at the drivers of meaningful attention. This is Dynator's ad diagnostic wheel. What you see in the middle circle are the six positive drivers that build ad performance and the one negative driver that actually detracts from performance. Now, in unpacking each of those drivers, for example, engagement, we see that the score, the performance KPI rating that is measured against each of these drivers is actually derived from questions relating to factors that deliver that performance. So in the case of engagement, we see that people who have found an ad interesting, enjoyable, informative, and whether the influence of music used in the ad has actually built their engagement with the advert. The same for distinction. We see here whether uh, distinction is being registered by the advert itself or the brand is being seen as distinctive or if a product was shown in the ad, if that is actually elevating distinction. So you can see how these different factors can then actually be used to define the shape of the performance and allow comparison from your ads versus competitor ads. So on this ad diagnostic wheel, we've combined the results of all 16 ads across all four approaches. So this is what you could say is the fingerprint, what success looks like on average for the ads as reported in the UK. And the general trend is not different from other research that we do day to day around the world. We find that the most memorable and persuasive ads are those that build engagement, are distinctive, build confidence and trust in a brand. So in my last couple of minutes, let's look at how the performance of each ad compared. Here we compare a summary of the persuasiveness of ads versus their memorability. And we find that meaningful attention is present in highly memorable ads. They're more persuasive. And we find that examples such as the John Lewis, Specsavers and VW examples are highly memorable, as is Burger King. But the level of persuasion for short term response and intention to purchase varies somewhat across that. Now, keep in mind, these adverts are for different industries, some of which are more impulse purchase and some of which are more considered purchase that happen less frequently. And as we compare the persuasiveness versus distinction, we find that the highly memorable ads also have a very high level of distinctiveness as well as the persuasion. So again, you find John Lewis and Specsavers performing well, but Samsung actually had the most persuasive ad and that was a product demonstration approach. The attention is also fundamentally driven through the level of engagement that people have in the ads. And you won't be surprised to see a common pattern of Samsung, John Lewis, Specsavers performing incredibly strongly, but joined also by Always and VW, uh, among some other brands in the top quadrant of the research. And we found this um, consistency of brands performing well, not just in one metric to deliver that level of attention that's meaningful, as well as performing across other metrics, very consistent, regardless of the industry that these brands were advertising for. So to lead into the summary, the key takeaway is that meaningful attention is generated by memorable, influential, attributable and measurable performance in your adverts. And of course, Dynata can help you measure that result. We hope our research has also clarified for you that meaningful attention can be generated using different approaches in advertising, but not all of these are as strong as each other. In particular, 
there may be very good reasons why your brand wishes to champion a purpose. But please be aware that doesn't mean that purpose driven advertising are the most effective at creating meaningful attention. Certainly when a product feature is demonstrated and brought to life, this influences short term purchase or action much more consistently in our research. And equally with storytelling that uses a product or talks about the brand, we find that there are longer term benefits for a brand in using these approaches. Thank you for putting up with my croaky voice today. I do apologize. Before I go, I just wanted to share with you one ad that was included in our test, which was from Germany and it was for VW. And this ad interests us because it was an ad that hasn't run in the UK where the research took place, but it was the most memorable ad in the research. Everyone has made Choices they regret And I've made a few Like letting go of you Time has passed me by Without you by my side When I think of all that's gone Thank you for your meaningful attention today. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Please contact me by email. Thank you.